Self-disqualification by way of forfeit is no dishonor here. Because when you are forced to play a game you know you're going to lose ten times over, why willfully participate within a humiliation brought about by the ration of shit that is your daily defeat? Because the game of life is rigged. It is in the house's favor to win. The maturity of the old soul is far too perturbable to be anything but a renunciate. Because games are supposed to be fun, voluntary, and winnable. But this particular quote-unquote game is involuntary, unwinnable, and there's nothing fun about it. You must first become unaffiliated with this place and thereafter assert nonpartisans all the way, if you ever want it to be game over. Because it is consensus, will to meaning, and active participation that is keeping it alive. Involvement is the problem, while non-involvement is the solution. It's as simple as that. A theory of obliteration must reign supreme, and do so from afar. I pledge allegiance to no flag, god, or party, and if I should have one desire, it would be the desire to never desire, to kill that bleeding heart, yes, and put a no in its stead. The fool affirms, while the wise negates. This is not a gray area. This is black and white. This is an absolute. You either entertain this place and therefore support it, or you completely disillusion yourself and thereafter disregard it entirely. Quote, It is a folly to imagine that truth resides in choice when any adoption of a position is equivalent to a contempt for truth. To our misfortune, choice, or position-taking, is a fatality that all too few can escape. Emile Chiran The nomad's equilibrium will self-actualize. Once the emotionalized tribalism of false duality has been disavowed. Because... In order to have a game, you must have two teams that are opponents. That's the 99%. While you, on the other hand, are a neutral spectator. You pick no sides. You're just watching the shit show for a clown world that it is rolling your eyes, and frowning upon both with equality. The profane love the vulgarity of a dumpster fire. The donkey cult or the elephant cult. What's the difference? Religion or atheism. What's the difference? They're all cages for consciousness called conceptions that enslave your fucking spirit at a low level of consciousness where you're so identified with matter, energy, space, and time that you become the assurance of its continuation by empowering it so. So, what do I say? I say, be apolitical, be asocial, be a religious, But most importantly, have the heart to be an asshole, and you will be happy thus, I assure you. Keep a loud and proud fuck you in your heart while you smile at the world that you find so contemptible. And they'll trust the appearance of your smile, and they'll think you're chill. They'll think 
you're a bro. But really? You are a foreigner in your own country, amongst your own people. Because of that loud and proud, fuck you, you have in your heart. Because that heart is an asshole who found its happiness thus. Here's the name of the game. Stuff doing bullshit for the sake of fuckery. Identity politics and moral relativism is really the ethos of Earthrealm entities. It's nothing more than an arbitrary schism of juxtaposition that belongs entirely to pick your poison. Is it going to be this lie over here or that lie over here? But guess what? There's an alternative. There's also a lie over here and a lie over there, and they all call it truth. Oh, you have so many options. So many lies to choose from. This realm, as far as I'm concerned, is just a sort of randomness generator of absurdity, where you have the excremental, but the excremental fragments itself into pieces of individual shit. And it says, here, here, we have the truth. That's all it is. I about face the human race and turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to all of humankind. Because I am the rejectionist par excellence. If anything, I strive to be the embodiment of antithesis. Here's my identity. I am nobody, and I therefore aspire to no thing. And where am I going? I'm going nowhere. And I'm perfectly happy and content with that. Because who am I? To be somebody in a place like this. Who am I to go anywhere in a place like this? There's a lot of things, but me, nothing satisfies me. Give me no thing at all. And I will just watch this spectacle of bullshittery. And I will see it for what it is. And I will roll my eyes, curl my toes, and bite my fucking lip. The purpose of my life is to be unlike unto the living. Or in other words, to be as dead to this world as I possibly can. That is my mission in life. So, what do you do with your philosophy? Nothing. Let's do a Q&A. Ask me a question. The answer is... Nothing. Here's what non-duality means to me. You have a diabolical dichotomy filled with deviledom. And when you're living in non-duality, you see both sides who are the opposing team as nothing more than useful idiots who are so identified with Maya, that they are essentially Maya themselves. And once you are in this state of non-duality, you recognize yourself as pure awareness that belongs to something that is pre-planetary or pre-existent in so much as a linear historical principle is concerned. 
you recognize that pure awareness as my being. And you look at the egomaniacal fuckboys and fuck girls running around as really nothing more than they of the orientation game. Pure identification with the body, operating from the lower chakras. You know, for instance, the pigmentation of one's skin, what's between their legs, what's their sexual orientation, all of these orientations, people like to make a complete spectacle and ass of themselves in regards to them and say, we are the victims. Yet, simultaneously, we are also the superiors. It is that self-irony that I have zero tolerance for and zero participation therewith. When you're in a state of non-duality, you look at both sides of the equation as stupid shitheads. And... What I'm working on right now is to go beyond antagonism because I look at the diabolical dichotomy of devildom that I spoke about earlier and I feel strong resentment. But until I reach a state of such supreme indifference that I am 100% convinced that everything around me is entirely unreal and therefore it has no effect over me. I'm not at that level yet. I recognize it as false, but it still pisses me off, because I see the falsehood, and I try to tell other people that they have been duped by the falsehood, and consequently, chronic infuriation is my emotional state, because the kings of the dung heap, with their arrogance, meet me with ridicule, sarcasm, and mockery, because never trust appearances is an absolute for me. And what you call reality, I call unreality. That is an absolute for me. But if they want to play their silly game and win their silly prizes, I'm going to let them. And I'm going to try everything in my power not to despise them every step of the way. It's really difficult to do. I have been getting quite a bit better. But... I look at them, and I see their mental retardation on parade, and with their numerical superiority, I can't help but fucking hate them. They are the many, far too many. They are the human, all too human. And I'm going to try to at least go beyond accepting or rejecting. I'm just going to look at them and say, it is what it is. Just vile pieces of garbage. And have that be my definition of equipoise. Have that be my own personal equilibrium of dissatisfaction. True equanimity will yield imperturbability. Unfortunately, most of us are not at that level yet. Our meditative zen cannot go on uninterruptedly because it is intersected by the disturbance of the game itself that arouses an emotional response and we therefore empower it thereby. So within a game, you have, of course, the players who are in opposition, and you have the narrators, i.e. mainstream media. You have the chairman of the board, we can call this government, politicians, the elite, etc. And you have the spectators, the people who are in the bleachers watching the game. And even though we're not picking sides, we're still up there in the nosebleeds, looking down and screaming bloody murder at the top of our lungs, wake up, wake up. And I feel like by us doing that 
and constantly even looking at the so-called truth or content or looking upon current events and giving our internal monologue of I agree, I disagree, I feel like that is still playing into it. See, I'm not at the level of the wholesomeness of indifference where pure non-duality is my natural state, because I am not operating from the point of pure awareness. I am operating from the point of pure awareness as long as I am unaware of what is going on in the outside world, and I'm not participating with other human beings, and I'm not keeping up with current events, and I'm just by myself reading philosophy, meditating, and just feeling into my spiritual awareness of who I ultimately am. But when I become aware of what's going on on the world stage, rather than seeing it as a motion picture and just being completely resting bitch face, I just, I can't help but have a bleeding heart of compassion because I do believe I am an empath and I think I'm really at fault because of this. My pity toward suffering is not going to help anybody suffering, but I'm going to suffer as a result of other people's suffering, and that doesn't do anybody any favors because I can't stop the suffering directly. When I look at what the elite, so-called, is doing to humanity, they're going to do what they do, and they're never going to stop, and humanity is going to continue to suffer as a result of their stupidity in regards to it. But really, I'm at the point of such nihilism that I just want to say, I am. my consciousness is done with the external consciousness of other people. It is done with the moving parts of objective reality. It is done, done, done. I want to treat life as if I am simply waiting for bodily death to occur. Here's an analogy I call get out of the circus. So you're standing in the middle of a circus. It's called a shit show for a clown world. That's the name of the circus. And you're running around. You're out of breath because you're getting yourself all worked up. And you look at the clown that's wearing a sombrero on a unicycle, juggling dildos, and you tell him to please stop. You're looking at the Arab who's fucking the goat in the petting zoo, and you say, look, man, I know the goat looks fuckable, but just because the goat looks fuckable doesn't mean you should fuck it. Right? And, but then you realize, wait a minute, even though I see the circus for the absurdity that it is, even though other people are entertained by it, you just let the clown continue to juggle those dildos, and you let that Arab fuck that goat, and you just don't get involved, and you just say, do what you do. Better yet, you realize, wait a minute, I'm still in the circus. Why am I in the circus? I see it for what it is, but... Why don't I just go home? And then you leave the circus, you go home, you close the door behind you, and you sit down, and you just experience the peace of oblivion, where you dissolve into nothingness, where nothing remains but beingness itself. And then you're no longer out of breath and all worked up. Because even though you know when you look out your window, you're going to see offensive things, I say, try to refrain from looking out the window. Because it's when you look out the window is when you frown. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, try to muster up a smile and know that it's all just a bad dream. And everything that is born must eventually die.
And when that time arrives, and it will inevitably, the world will dissolve. And the most profound gnosis is to embody the idea that there is nothing for me here.